welcome to the stream. We have a problem. We have a problem to fix. I'm currently doing some refactoring of the data stream subsystem. There were some previous episodes for that on the stream. And I actually, um, when I uh, rewatched the small part of, of one of the videos, I um, discovered that we actually have a design problem uh, in the in the subsystem right now that was created by uh, part of the refactoring and so it seems that um, rewatching a video has a similar effect like some kind of delayed pair programming with yourself and you notice things that you overlooked in the first pass it has to do with our change in the data stream interface regarding the end of file detection. So one outcome of the design review was that we simplified the stream interface considerably. And now the stream interface is literally three pointers and one position offset variable. So could hardly be much simpler. So I think if you would only do forward passing, you could get it down to two pointers, for example. And if you don't need efficient, efficient um, access to the current position, you could, could get rid of the offset variable too. But it's, it's pretty much as simple as it gets. And it turns out that for one case, we made it a little bit too simple but I think we we will find a way to deal with that and so let me explain the problem first previously we had a flag in the interface that could indicate um, that we hit the end of the stream and for, for reasons that I partially discussed on the stream I decided to remove that and now it turns out that we have one case where this creates a problem. Unplug, replug, restart, and pray. People don't write software like, like this. Please write software that works. Okay, we have a pen. So, um, let me sketch the a stream buffer. Stream buffer is just an array of bytes that holds the, the portion of the stream that is currently in memory and is based on three pointers so that the handling of the array is based on three pointers where the buff pointer points to the beginning of the buffer end pointer points exactly to after the last byte of the buffer and then you have a, a running pointer simply called pointer that uh, moves around in, in this array and now the following can happen so the, the pointer is, is is pointing somewhere and as it advances as you as you read bytes as you consume bytes from the stream this pointer advances and it, it it can advance until it is pointing exactly to the same position as the end pointer this does not yet mean that you have reached the end of the stream it simply means that if you want another byte, you will need to call the fetch interface function that usually will give you 
more bytes to, to consume. So in this situation, you call fetch. And if after the fetch, pointer is still pointing to the same uh, point lo location as end, then you know that the fetch was unsuccessful in uh, providing more bytes and you really have reached the end of the stream. So the interpretation of this situation depends on whether you just have called fetch or not. And this kind of, that's a little complication that we accepted as a trade-off uh, for removing the end of, end of file uh, flag in the interface. And I think overall it's a good, it's a good trade-off, but it, it, causes, it causes a problem. So for fetch, we don't have the problem. So if we call fetch and the situation after the fetch looks like this, that we have pointer equals end, then we know that the fetch has hit the end of the file. Fine. So fetch is good. Now let's look at some, some other functions. So a function like we have a get character function that is also fine because this function uh, consumes the next byte and if there is no net next byte it, it fails so it considers hitting the end of file an error condition it does this internally by calling fetch and if it afterwards we have this situation then it errors out and so this is also okay uh, we have a function a peak character that looks ahead at the next byte without consuming it and this also errors out when, it, when, when there is no more byte. So those are all fine. Uh, then we have a function maybe peak character and this function works in the following way that if there is a a following byte in the stream, then it returns this byte. If, so we have two cases. We have a byte and we have no byte. If there is a byte in the stream, then this returns the byte. If there is no byte in the stream, this returns zero. This is very useful for some code paths where we, um, we want to proceed at, at least a little bit, even if we are at end of stream. And the zero value is usually the most convenient to deal with. The problem is that the zero value actually is a valid byte value. So just by looking at the value, you cannot, you cannot distinguish between the two of them. Now we could, we could do something else like return something outside of the byte range, like minus one or so, and then we could distinguish, but that would make this function less useful in most contexts because we really want to keep the data, the, the data type of the byte and so on. So I have some reasons for doing it like this. And this is actually not the function that has the problem because when, we, when this function returned, we can still tell, because it does not consume the byte, we can still tell which situation we have. Because um, the thing is, if, if, we still have, if we still have a byte in a buffer, then, then here, when this function returns, the situation will, for example, look like this, that a pointer is not at the, at the end of the, of the stream buffer because we have this, this one byte uh, still to consume. 
So we can actually tell which, which case we had by looking at the buffer pointer. In this case, we will have pointer is strictly less than end. And vice versa, in this case where we don't have a byte, so fetch failed to provide more bytes, we have actually pointer equals end. So also this function does fine. So let's move on. The function that actually causes the problem is a, a related function that is maybe get character. And the, the idea here is, so either you have no byte in the buffer left or you have a byte. And the idea of get, maybe get character is that if you have a byte, it consumes the byte and then and it returns it. If we have no byte, it returns zero. And here we get the problem because there is no condition that we can check afterwards that tells us which which path the function had, had taken. Because we might find the buffer pointer pointing to the end, but this could either mean that fetch was unable to produce more characters. So in this case, we have definitely pointer equals end, but also in this case, we could have pointer equals end because maybe the byte we just consumed was the one before the buffer end. So if, if we just advanced the buffer pointer by consuming the byte here, we will have, um, we could have, so, so this can happen. So um, we cannot distinguish these, these two cases uh, by looking at the buffer point and we cannot distinguish them by anything else. I was thinking first that I could I could do it by, compare, by comparing pointer and, and buff to see if we advanced, but that's, that also doesn't work because our contract for fetch currently, currently doesn't say anything about, about um, this after a failure to provide more bytes. The only thing that the contract says that if fetch fails to produce additional bytes, to uh, fails to provide additional bytes, then it must set pointer equal to end. It doesn't say anything about the uh, buffer start, so it doesn't. Uh, fetch is not um, required to also set the buffer start to the same location. And so we cannot really tell whether this consume byte operation here has advanced the pointer because we don't know anything about, about the, the buffer start. So that's, that's the problem. This, this function maybe get character is causing the problem. Now, there are multiple ways that we could that we could deal with that. Um, for example, even without changing the function, if we actually save the buffer pointer before, and if we say something like old pointer is pointer, then we could do the following. So, um, this either triggers a fetch or not. If it triggers a fetch and the fetch is unsuccessful, then for sure we will have pointer equals end at the end. And we don't know about the relation of pointer and old pointer. Actually, I must not Maybe this doesn't even work. Let, let's go, let's think it through. If, if we consume, so if we, we might call fetch here, 
So no, this this actually doesn't work because we might also we might have a fetch call here before consuming one byte, and this might also change the completely change the, all the buffer pointers. They are not guaranteed to remain valid across a fetch call. So this actually this actually doesn't work un, unless we extend the, the contract of the fetch interface function and say that I mean we could we could uh, ask it for some further guarantees to not not change the, any of the pointers in the case that it cannot uh, provide more data but I think we we shouldn't we shouldn't mess with the contract of fetch for something as for for this fringe kind of fringe function so so that actually doesn't work Can, we, we simply cannot tell by looking at the pointer. We could, we could make just this function set a flag in the interface or give it an, a pointer to an out, out argument that it can set or something like that. Um, we could change this return value to lie outside the byte range which is actually something that I want to optionally do to make this function more useful. Or we just say this function should only be used if you don't care which one it was. And you should use peak, char peak character and do the consuming yourself if you care. And I think that's the way we will go. Because I really don't want to change the interface just for this single function that is actually not used that much. And we will look at the, at the usage immediately right after this. So that's, that's a problem. Only this function is causing a problem. All the other ones are fine. And that's the reason why I do not want to revert my decision about removing the end of file flag because it's really just a single, a single uh, use case that is creating a problem. And we will solve this, in, this use case in, a, um, in, in other ways. So let's do that. Let's solve our problem. So, um, first we will um, we will look for places where this maybe get character is used. This is one. This is the, the most important one because this is in our data stream bit source, which is used quite a lot in, in uh, decoding Huffman coded data. So here we, we get the character, maybe get the character. And afterwards we try, we try by looking at, at, at the buffer start and the buffer pointer, whether we actually got a byte. And this is wrong. This needs to be fixed. And so what we will actually do is here we will peek at the next character, put it in a reservoir or put zero in a reservoir, which is actually what we want in this case, if we are at end of file. And then now that we use peek, we can actually uh, do this check because we have not yet consumed anything if, if we actually got something. So we did actually get a byte from the stream. We should probably reformulate this because we did not get it in the sense of consume it. Um, Let's say we can actually get a byte from the stream. So we um, so we simply consume it.
and that's it that's the change because that's the only this this increment of the pointer is actually the only difference between the peak character and the get character function it's just that in order to solve the problem we needed to separate this and and put this decision in the middle where where we can still see the difference and that's that's everything we need to do here so that should not even after everything is inline this should not even make the code any any um less efficient and so on so i think that's that's fine now so let's go to the next use i think that's exactly the same situation so exactly the same situation I don't know maybe it's maybe it's nicer to immediately deal with the pointer because here we're looking at the pointer so that's maybe a bit nicer it doesn't really matter so these two are fixed and I think yeah they, they, that, that's the only remaining part thing we need to look at yeah that's it and here this is a more tricky case because we are actually doing maybe get character twice because we are parsing a hex byte in a pdf a kind of asti hex string um, and here what we will do is the first the first time we will use get character and here we cannot really tell whether we hit the end. And then we will do peak character as the second one. Because if this was successfully getting the character, this also must have been successful. Because we can only hit the end once in the kind of streams that we, that we are using. And even if we should be in a very strange kind of stream, that can recover from hitting the end and produce more characters afterwards what's we we wouldn't get a problem because if this is set to zero this check here will fail and we will get an invalid hex at a similar nib so that that's not a problem in this case this is actually just an aside um, this is one one of the cases where we probably would like to combine error handling so it's really excessive to call to have an error check so this xx is just an error check to have an error check here after every byte but on the other hand this function is not written to be fast currently anyway because if you want to be fast you would not you would not um, deal with you would not deal with all the hex bytes one nibble at a time you would try to process a whole chunk of, of hex bytes uh, as, as one as one block of data if you want to be fast so we are not we are not that worried about speed here anyway and this will probably never i i don't think this this will ever end up as a hot function because um, if a pdf wants to be efficient it will not use this hexadecimal uh, byte encoding. This is more for demonstration purposes and so on and for little pieces of data. Okay, so um, so if this did not get a byte, this is zero. So definitely, definitely we will come here and here we can actually do the correct check now so if we really are at end of file we can do the correct error message yeah otherwise we had some other problem that's not the case we are interested in here otherwise otherwise we know that we did not fail we did not fail 
uh, to peek successfully at the next um, at the next character. So in this case, peak character actually looked looked at an available byte, and we consume it. And that's it. Because in the yeah, we definitely we definitely hit this path if this hits end of file. Because then we will have a, a zero here and the table will give a some something negative. So so this case is also fixed and that's everything. Okay, do I still have some Y? I thought I had, do I have some problem with my, I, have, I thought I had this correctly set up. Did I mess something up here? Yeah. It seems so. I was because I was playing with my WimRC file earlier today, and it seems I messed something up. What is it that I messed up? Because we don't, when I source the file, I don't get an error message here. Yeah, I don't get I don't get an error message. So thus some Okay, maybe maybe this is messing up the make the make program. That could be the case. Yeah, that's what, that was the problem. Sorry about that. Um, let's see if things compile. And let's run our PDF parser tests to see if our code is still working. Compile times are really the biggest, the biggest problem I have with C++. I hate the compile times. So test PDF parser. Oh, we actually have a fail. What is going on? Oh, because <laughs> yeah, it, it has to fail because this is the wrong this is the wrong uh, orientation of the comparison operator. Stupid me. So that was 
that was in parse hex byte, right? Yeah. So it's of course pointer must be smaller than end. So let's also, even if it doesn't matter here, let's always use the order pointer and end to avoid mistakes like this. I think that's the second or third time I have made this stupid mistake. I should get used to always having the sequence buff pointer end. Yeah, we pass now. So that was the first, that actually completely solved the problem that we have. Um, I just want to, first I want to document this peculiarity of the maybe get character function that you cannot tell whether you hit end of stream. And then I actually, I think I actually want to make the function a bit more useful. by, okay, that's also something I need to rerun tags. I should really create myself a shortcut for that. C tags. No. Because here we still have a one command reading, consume the next character if there is one. In case of end of file, this function returns the null character. And this this is if the one is here, the recorder can use stream end of file to determine, determine whether end of file has been reached. And this is no longer true because this does no longer exist. So we need to document the contracts of these functions uh, correctly. And here I'm thinking about doing the following to actually allow the caller to specify a default or an end of an end of file value. And in the case that we don't don't get a byte, return this end of file value and actually increase here the data byte to 32 bits signed because then we could do something like uh, say okay please give me minus one at the end of file for example and then it can differentiate and if you really want zero for some reason because you want to use it as an array index for example as in the, in the example we had then you you pass here end of file value zero so read and consume in case of end of file this function returns value. So if there is no if there are no more bytes available to the stream. And then we put the warning um, if is in the range of u int 8t, which is of course 0 to 255. Caller has no way to distinguish between having the stream
has no way to tell, let's say, has no way to tell whether the stream could provide by to consume. So let's provide a byte to consume. That is, yeah, this is, this is then a problem that the that the caller accepts. And now the question is, what should we default to? Probably we should default to something like minus one that actually allows to tell whether you you hit the end or not, and then we should. Um, we should, in, in the one case where we use it, we should explicitly tell it to return zero because we use it here as an array index. As this is a function that will always get inline, the change we just did actually will not not increase the code in, in any way so yeah again we we need to um to rerun our tag generation and now i really want to i think i really want to make myself a shortcut for that What could I use for that? Can, can I map shift F12 maybe? Currently it does nothing. Let's, let's see if this works. Shift F12. And This would do let's say actually is this I always forget how do you how do you use shell? No, what was it called? Was it called system? Yeah, system executes. I mean, system would work, but there should be something simpler, right? I, I, right now, I don't, I don't remember what it is called. Because execute executes win commands. So we can do it with we can do it with system. You also can do it with the exclamation. Is it just this run command to shell? Yeah, I think it's just that colon exclamation. So here we will actually um,
the point is I want to have the path to the command in a variable, I think, like ctex. like ctex command. Like that. And then I, I want to set my So this is currently and I want to pass it recursive and something like that. Actually, this would be let. Okay, and if it's let, I should. I should double these. These slashes. not these. And to make it more readable, let's get rid of these and let's quote the whole thing. Uh, let's try if the, this works, shift F12. I think, I think that worked. It's just annoying that it opens this stupid window, but I think good enough for now. Yeah, the tags work. Also the, the new one that has the new, the, yeah, that has the new signature works. So, I think that's it. Do we get a, we might get now a compiler warning. We might have to add a cast. Because we changed the return value type. Oh, actually, actually, why did, why did this work at all? Because actually Uh, probably because the only use is the one with the three arguments. So it was just considering, it was just ignoring the prototype that was never used. Yeah, things are still working. Okay, problem solved.